So I'm using my smart board. Now on the video, you might see some colors shifting. It has to do with the phase relationship between the projector and the camera. That's obviously not here on the smart board itself. Let's start with an example. I've got uh, 55 miles per hour, and I want to convert that into meters per second. The technique is simply to multiply this by 1. And so I have to come up with ways of multiplying this by 1 to get rid of hours, get rid of miles, and be left with meters and seconds. Let's deal with hours first, because I happen to have that one memorized. There are 3,600 seconds in one hour. And let's take this put aside. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. Now this works because an hour and 3,600 seconds are basically the same thing. So it's basically 1 divided by 1, well, something divided by itself. You can multiply that and not really change the equality of it. So now the question is, which one of these conversion factors? They both represent the same thing, uh, but they're in different forms. Which one do I need to get rid of hours and to be left with seconds? Well, if I multiply by this one, I would have hours times hours. I would have hours squared for a unit. If I use this one, then I have hours divided by hours, and they would cancel out, leaving me with units of seconds. So this is the conversion factor I want to use. Now to convert miles to meters, I'm pulling this out of the air. I think there's 1,609 meters is equal to a mile, which means one mile is equal to 1609 meters. Let's get rid of this thing. So which one of these do I want to use? Well, I've got miles here. If I use this one, I would have miles squared, and that wouldn't help me. So I could use this one. I would have miles divided by miles. My miles would cancel out. And now I've got meters per second. So to find the answer, it would be 55 times 1609 meters divided by 3600 seconds. And that converts 55 miles per hour into meters per second. Multiply, then divide, and you get your number. Let's do a problem involving mass defect, energy to mass and mass to energy. Now, if you were to take a sample of uh, radioactive material and have it undergo uh, a fission, you would break it into some small parts, fission fragments, there would be some extra neutrons around. And the idea is, if you were to weigh these on a balance, You would find something interesting. I'm grouping them, and then I'm going to do this. You would find that the original weighs more than apparently all of the pieces. There's a difference in mass. There's a mass defect. And this mass defect shows up in nuclear equations. The mass can be converted to energy by multiplying it by the speed of light squared equals mc squared, famous equation. So it's this mass defect. The mass for this equation would have to be kilograms times meters per second squared times meters. It would be kilogram meters per second squared, which is a newton, and then newton meters is a joule, which is units of energy. We sometimes measure subatomic particles in universal mass units. So a common question is, uh, you had uh, 3.27 uh, universal mass units. How much energy is that in joules? So it's a conversion problem. Again, we want to multiply this by 1. So we look up our conversion unit. 1 universal mass unit 
is equal to 931 times 10 to the 6 electron volts, or 9.31 uh, times 10 to the 2 MeVs. So now we can write this as 931 times 10 to the 6 EVs is the same as one universal mass unit. Which one of these conversion factors do we use? Well, universal mass units up above, we want the one that has universal mass units below, and so we multiply that. And so now that will convert universal mass units into electron volts. Now I want to convert electron volts into joules. And I happen to have that conversion factor. One electron volt is equal to, and I just look it up, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, which I can write as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is equal to 1 electron volt. So let's see which one do I want to use. I get EV above, I get EV below, I'm going to use this one. So 3.27 times 931 times 10 to the 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And I'm left with, EVs cancel out, I'm left with joules. And so it seems like a complex problem, but uh, relatively straightforward. We just look up our conversion factors, and this was given to us originally. Sometimes in conversions, it's the simple stuff that gets us confused. 3.2 kilometers, and you ask to convert that to meters. So you do that, and then you have to have a conversion factor. 1,000 meters is the same as 1 kilometer. And one kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. Which conversion factor do I use? Well, meters above, I need meters below. I divide by 1,000, and that tells me how many... Whoops, wait a minute, what did I do? Well, I'm going from kilometers to meters. And immediately I saw my mistake. I'm going to be multiplying kilogram or kilometers times kilometers. I'll end up with kilometers squared. That won't help me. So this is the one I use. See? It works. And now we're left with meters. So uh, 3.2 kilometers is 3,200 meters. Relatively straightforward.